All right, the Chrysler, uh, the 56 Chrysler Windsor wagon arrived in Omaha uh, the day before yesterday. They picked it up. Today is the fourth. They picked it up on the first in Las Vegas. And I got a call the next day saying, yeah, we will have, they didn't speak very good English. We will have your car there uh, Thursday. So I went down to Omaha on Thursday. I had to go there anyway. They said, we'll have it there late afternoon. So we did our work there in Omaha in late afternoon, no car. I emailed them and said, well, what time exactly? Should we come back tomorrow? No email. I left a couple voice messages. I called the transport company, the headquarters in South Carolina. No call back, nothing. So it, started, it got 10 o'clock and I was like, you know what, I'm tired. I got to go back to Sioux Falls, uh, 260 miles north. 140, I'm sorry, yeah, what is that? 7, 8, 8, 16, 170 miles north, just about 200 miles north of uh, Omaha. So I had to go back home, never heard from them, and then the next thing, 7 o'clock in the morning, the phone rings, we are here with your car. And I'm like, well, just leave it there. And they were mad, how do we get paid? Well, I, d I used you ship, you just hit a button, and they get paid. But they didn't know that, but anyway, we had that car running, as you saw in the video. Uh, it ran fine going up on the uh, on the ramp. So now we're going to, it won't start. They had to back it down. Uh, they didn't know, they forgot, you know, you have to push the neutral button on the shifter. And who knows, it won't start. So I called a friend of mine, they pushed it into a parking spot. And I called a friend of mine down, I want to check it out. He couldn't get it started either. He said, uh, he says, well, it sounds like the solenoid is actuating, but the engine's just not turning over. So that's where we are now. So I'm heading, it's actually in a parking spot that's kind of a bad place. So uh, I'd rather do this tomorrow morning, but I'm heading there now. Well, it's gonna rain tomorrow. So let's see if that starter is broke. I got a spare starter in the back here. So I'm hoping it is just the starter. Maybe I can get a pry bar and uh, turn the engine a half a revolution or something and uh, bam it'll go tap on it with a hammer that type of thing uh, it did have a bad wire that goes to the starter uh, the solenoid you know did actuate so we'll look into that we'll be there in just maybe 30 more minutes well we're here at the locality uh, 84th street here in Omaha and there is the station wagon. They taped all up all that chrome. It looks awful with that tape. There's no reason for them to have done that, but they did it. So we are here in Omaha, or should I say, we're here in Omaha. Okay, let's look under the hood. All right, so here's what's going on. It uh, seems like the battery has plenty of power. It just the solenoid pokes itself out, and but it won't turn. The uh, starter will not turn. I got a spare starter, but I'm going to try a couple things first. Gosh, it feels like it wants to. So I'm going to just jump the uh, solenoid real quick. We're gonna put, this could be bad, I don't think so. But the, the line that actually, look at that, that actually goes to the starter and I got another wire. And then I can rig another wire that goes to the solenoid. Somehow these, they're hot too, wow. Yeah, I need to replace that, both of them. So, but just for fun, I want to see what happens if I um, just try to jump the solenoid on this? Doesn't look very good, eh? Yeah, it doesn't. Should turn over. And am I seeing any rotation in the crank? Oh, whoa! There it goes. Almost. It tried to turn. That was kind of cool. Yeah, it is turning a little bit. Watch. All right, let's see what that wire looks like now. It's not hot, hot, it's just 
warm. Yeah, the battery cable is more warm than the darn. It's wanting to kick over. Maybe I could. Yeah, it's definitely a solenoid uh, connection. Oh, whoa. All right, we better stop. Yeah. Ah, shit. Yeah, we're burning up stuff. Better quit. Give it a break. All right, we're going to disconnect that. Oh, now it's smoking. That wasn't a good idea. Probably the wire. Yeah, I smell electricity. Darn it. All right. So these solenoid wires here, the whole thing is loose. The whole, so something's busted and the solenoid is hot, you know? Um, I'm just trying to see what the bolts are for the, for the uh, starter. I don't see them. Ah, there's one there. Okay, that's not too bad. I just gotta clean them off. All right, I'm gonna try to get these uh, wires off and the starter off. <sighs> Doesn't look like fun, but it's gotta get done. And I'm in a dangerous spot too, look at this. Right in a driveway. Well, I got, I got the starter somewhat loose. They said it wasn't gonna rain till 10 o'clock, so I really gotta hurry. There's a big storm coming in here and those bolts, I can only get them off small turn at a time I'll show you real quick and then I gotta get to wrench it or I'm gonna be in trouble the heck is that thing so I even got to make a new uh, wiring harness yeah thank you for the MP spray I gotta have some, I need some spray on here so yeah so here's where we are I need a shorter 5 eighths wrench there might be one in the shop there I don't know so you know I don't have much room to get that bolt off there I got this one loose I'm gonna spray it down more so maybe I can get it with my fingers the rest of the way loose but if I can spray it down I think I can get it off of my fingers the rest of the way but this one I'm gonna cut this took forever by the way these terminals were just spinning around on that solenoid all right, storm clouds. We're getting closer. I don't know what's gonna happen. Might dodge it though. Uh, anyway, I got that starter off and the teeth look really good. And I was able to put a screwdriver in there and crank the engine. Uh, no problem. But all these grease zerks, I'd sure like to have time to do. I don't know if I have time. Uh, but anyway, yeah, let me get this other starter back in here now, and I got to look at that wire. Look at that. So I got I got another cable I'm going to put together there. So I'll be right back. We're going to get this sucker in there. All right, so I put a new battery wire between the solenoid and the uh, starter. Now I need a solenoid wire. So I'm using this. This 16 is should be enough, but I'm going to go ahead and use 10 and yeah when i went to vegas i traveled with all this stuff which one is 10 right there and i uh i knew i was going to need it well if i would have driven the car driven the car i would have needed needed that for sure but the starter is something that uh, i'm glad i didn't have to replace outside of a more controlled area like where i am now that would suck to have to change that out on the side of the road I'm trying to remember what kind of uh, hang on a second i gotta find what all what nut fits on that uh yeah that that'll fit inside will that work on number 10 yep sure does on the solenoid side and then on the starter side it's a ring and i did cut this a little bit too much here See, let's crimp that on. Whoops. Let's see if that's enough.
if that should hold let's get the other side and that should be number 10 there we got enough and we'll use one of these forked connectors I sure hope this works I hope it wasn't uh, something else I don't see it being something else really there we go so I got a good solenoid wire it's gonna do the job probably better than original all right carburetor still looks clean and the uh, coil nothing's missing uh, this probably needs to be uh, checked this this hose probably needs to be checked but anyway let's take a look where we are now all right I think I'm about ready to start the car so what I did here you can see clearly I routed these wires I think they're safe here so that they don't hit the exhaust this is the old one it shouldn't be in the way I just got to tighten down the solenoid nut here there we go you can see there nice okay where's that wrench let's see if I can torque that down ah can't even see with my glasses here let me try to fix this I'm using the connector as a wrench. Yeah, let me get the proper one, darn it. All right, let me just tighten that up and we'll start the car. Oh, and let me show you what I did. Show you what I did up on top. Ow, oh, I just hit my knee on that. Oh, man. Shoot. See the clouds growing out here. Familiar with Omaha. Oh man. Whew. All right. So there's what I did right there. So we got we got the new. Uh, here's the old one. Look at that. All right. Here's the new one and the new solenoid wire. Let me just grab another wrench and then we'll hook up the battery and see if we can get this thing to turn over. These, these here vice grips usually come in handy. For, that's how I tighten down the rest of that uh, near impossible nut on the uh, on the starter there. there. It's, ah. Let me just tighten that down. Oh, there's the fuel, uh, fuel filter. Look how dirty that sucker I'm gonna have to change that out on the drive if I don't just put a uh, fuel tank in this little cove area here. All right, <clears throat> let's see if we can get this thing started. Let me lay this stuff in here and let me grab this thing all right first of all let's see if we got any um, okay no spark uh, no spark here I'm just gonna lay that on okay and let's connect this here and carefully I don't short that out. I don't know if that's going to even get in there. Uh -oh. Got it. Maybe that'll work. Look, the light is red here. All right, I'm going to turn on the ignition. See if I can get this thing to turn over. The light's on. Courtesy. Okay. Let's, let's uh... Crank it. Give it a couple cranks here. 
Let's see if the engine fires. Ready? Look at that. Look at that. Am I a genius or what? Look at that sucker. No smoke either. And look at that. That's like a 200 RPM idle. Let's look for smoke though. All right, man almighty. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of puff back there. It smells more like fuel, but it's been sitting in those. Everybody's been, uh, what do you call it? Stomping on the gas, so. That's a Hemi for you, man. This sucker's got more horsepower to pull three of these. All right, let me uh, tighten down everything in here and we'll see what we can do. All right, so I got this thing in a safer spot. Working on getting this tape off too. Anyhow, before I can drive it, I think the brakes are fine. The fluid does show where it needs to be. There's a lot of play. There's play in the steering too. There's your play in the steering. But that most of that is the wheel bearing. So I'm gonna knock I'm gonna knock this sucker off. It's, I should grease those. Oh yeah, look at that mess. Let's see what we got here. Oh, well, someone really greased it. And that's some type of graphite grease. It's fairly fresh, actually. So I think we, we don't have to spend time with that. All right, we're here at the house in Omaha. Uh, let's see here. I was going to change the differential fluid and I re realized that I forgot a very important tool. Well, I think I mentioned it last night. Somebody put a drain on here and I don't think, I could be wrong. I thought these didn't have a drain. Uh, it was a hex key or something. I'm not sure I have. I think it's a quarter inch drive, which I left home. Here's the brake line. It looks like somebody redid that not too long ago. But, um, yeah, the frame under this car looks good. The exhaust is fresh. The drive shaft looks good. A lot of stuff looks good and a lot of stuff looks bad on this car. A lot of stuff that should have withered away and not be, been in place is in place. Like those pads on the springs. <clears throat> Alright, this plug I tried everything I could. I even used shims but of course I used a 3 8 3 8 adapter. I used quarter inch. It's uh, bigger than a three eight, and it's smaller than a three eighths, and it's bigger than a quarter inch. And I have gone on forums before, and I've asked people. I said, well, "What size are these plugs?" Oh, quarter inch. And then I asked them again. No, it's smaller, or it's bigger. And they said, "Oh, it's three eighths." And I said, "No, it's smaller." Then it's quarter inch. Then they say, "I don't know what you're talking about." Then, no, this is two out of three that are the same. So there's a mystery size. Uh, for these. I don't know what it is. And I was hoping maybe some old timer would tell me. But they say the same thing. 3 eighths a quarter inch. So this is obviously different. Maybe it's something somebody rigged up. But on the Thunderbird it's the same too. My quarter inch is too big and the 3 eighths is too... I mean the quarter inch is too small. And the 3 eighths is too big. So we're just going to pull the plug and do it the old-fashioned way and just pump the stuff out which I, sh I should have just done in the first place from the beginning um, so let's see first thing you do is see where the level is up oh, it's not I can't even touch it with my fingers so that's not a oh barely yep it does look kind of clean there I finally got it now 
see if we can get at least two and a half pints out of here. It actually doesn't look that bad, but moisture and everything else can ruin the fluid, especially GL5. You don't want to take any chances. The difference between a good GL5 and a bad GL5, I mean, like a really expensive, it doesn't even have to be expensive, but a high quality synthetic and a non synthetic can be two miles per gallon especially in cold temperatures that's true you can uh, you can test it and you can see it if you have one of those infrared thermometers you can measure the temperature difference of the differential and see where your energy is going all right here's here's what i'm putting back in here this view here 80 w90 and compared to the 7590 this is just a little bit heavier for worn so watch this instead of using the pump put that i'm gonna keep the pan here in case it starts to leak i'm gonna just pour this i'm gonna jet this through there we go and you just squeeze the bag easy pack no pump needed we got about a half quart there. Look at that. Look how easy that was. No pump. Let me make sure we get it all. And you could save these bags too. Use them for other stuff. There, so I got one quart in there. And I should be able to get a, at least a half another. Ooh, ooh. So I'm gonna lay this down. Check with my pinky here. Yeah, it's touching. Let me try it one more time. Yeah, I'm in, no, wait. Nope, it does need a little bit more. That should be it, I bet you. Let it settle. Yeah, we're there. Let me test one more time. Quarter inch below the... Yep, I'm in the fluid. We're good to go. We can put the cap on it. And we can get on the highway if we wanted to and measure that differential temperature and see a reduction move the pan there we go and we're finished okay so i'm back up here at my shop uh, our second store here in omaha 84th i uh, got air in the tires the tires only had 20 pounds in them and so now it steers so much better and uh the, yeah there was some weird slip sounded like a belt slip but it turned out I think it was the transmission so I, I just topped that off I'm gonna start it up and check the level the transmission fluid and then I got the radiator cool enough I could open the cap and you know what I don't think this thing is sealing properly I'm gonna have to get another cap but I did pour some of the coolant boost in there so that'll help keep the temperatures down but ooh, nice storage area here uh, but anyway, yeah, that's it's kind of cracked and stuff because all the look the rubber is all coming apart. Yeah, so I'm gonna replace that the next stop. Oh, and one thing I wanted to tell you again, I'm not doing this to sell my products. I'm just uh, these are just suggestions. Anytime, anytime you see the you know old stuff, we got these little flaps to put oil down in there uh, the, the uh, distributor has one the generators typically have one and sometimes the idler probably will have one uh, if you don't have three in one oil or something like that a firearm lubricant of any type 
it's a higher viscosity than a spray lubricant now this happens to be in a spray can i don't like the spray can version we actually have a drip version but this is just to give you an idea something that's better if you have nothing you, you know you should have something in there to get down the highway if it's been sitting for a long time and uh yeah firearm lubricant is thicker than any of the other types of spray lubes because yeah you, you don't want to put a wd-40 down here because that just washes out uh stuff and it it, it uh, thickens it has a uh what do you call it a varnishing component so this is just an idea but any firearm lubricant is going to be thicker than this other types of spray lubes uh what else needs to be done here before i well, i got a windshield wiper to put on and it hasn't leaked a drop of oil um used any oil at all but anyway the belts are a little bit loose but i'm just going to keep an eye on it oh you know what this does not look good huh we'll just keep an eye on that too that's funny looking this flex line here and the hose down there looks fairly new oh yeah i need to get this line out of the way of the exhaust make sure it's not touching nope it's not touching the exhaust all right next thing we're gonna do we're gonna clean out this thing oh i gotta check the uh power steering fluid too i filled it out but in case it's losing fluid we'll find out in just a moment Yeah, a guy came by a minute ago to look at this. He says, man, this is the ultimate car. You've got a you know, heavy-duty station wagon that can be used as a truck or a tower or a hauler or a camping vehicle or whatever from the 50s, you know. And this one's rough, you know, so you don't got to worry about your, uh, your trailer queen or any of that stuff. That's, that's what I like, you know. Oh, shoot. Darn it. I gotta find that screw. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's down there somewhere. Let's see where we are here, though. Oh, man. Woo! Oh, yeah, it's kind of low. All right, we'll get that topped off, too. Okay, got a little bit in over my head here. Almost. The Bendix was bad on this new rebuilt starter. The teeth just wouldn't engage because the first time I put it on, it started making noises but this one is nice and smooth so i'm just going to swap them out what a pain this is but that's what i'm doing right now so we're going to put this starter together with a better bendix right now there's the old one and this one the solenoid worked but the armature was dead and it's all shorted out the brushes were totally worn down anyway just a quick update hopefully we got to get on the road all right, we're on the road. I'm north of Blair, Nebraska. And as you can see, uh, this Chrysler's driving pretty decently, but uh, we had a bunch of hiccups. I had a charging problem. I don't think that the, uh, I don't think the generator's polarized. It is charging, but it, it's not working like it should. But I'm going about 58 miles per hour, as you can see here. Highway 75 uh, going north. The engine's staying cool. Haven't used any oil. And 32 miles so far into this drive. Now from Blair, Omaha to Blair, I think I used about a gallon and a half of gas. Pay attention. The fuel gauge was working. Not working now. Kind of comes and goes. I think when I burn a couple of gallons, it'll pop back up. Yeah, oil pressure, no problem. It's charging, but if you don't polarize properly, uh, what happens is that uh, you start burning the brushes because you're actually fighting the generator. But anyway. Just wanted to give an update, heading to Sioux Falls here, 33 miles north of Omaha. It's 
so as long as I keep this sucker running, it seems to do pretty good. Now I got people behind me. Oh, why don't they just pass? Anyhow. All right, we're 50 miles in. Temperature still staying the same. The uh, fuel gauge not moving. But just a few miles south of uh, Decatur, Nebraska. Here's a real nice house here, if you can see it. I drive by this all the time. I missed out on that thing when it was for sale a couple years back. Anyway, I'm right at about 65 now, so it seems to be a sweet spot for this motor and transmission. The transmission is making some weird noises when you accelerate or around the 55 mile per hour area. But up here at 60, 64, 5, right around there, it quiets down. All the noises go away. So we'll check in a little bit more. I'm trying to get as far as I can without having to use my headlights. I'm trying to charge up the battery as much as I can. Then i got to figure out how to polarize this generator. I forget which one is the field terminal and which one's the, uh, the armature terminal. So I've been looking it up. Nothing tells me. I left the shop manual at home. So anyway, uh, let's, uh, we'll be back. Yeah, the second I stopped that other uh, video, the fuel gauge started working. So it's just the top three gallons or so it doesn't, but I'm going 64, 65, 66 something. And the temperature's staying right where it needs to be. So, we're about 13 miles south of Sioux City in the 56 Chrysler Windsor Town and Country. And yeah, I gotta, I gotta fix that headliner here. So, yeah, it's driving pretty smooth. Watching the temperature, oil pressure, and the fuel. Uh, yeah, fuel economy's not too good. It does look like it's used uh, half, a, half a tank almost, but I'm gonna top it off and we'll find out. See how many gallons I get in here. So anyway, Sioux City just up ahead, and I'm staying on the back roads. Alright, we're in Sioux City, Iowa. I'm going to take a quick run up I-29 to the first gas station here. So you can see, I meant to start it before the bridge. I don't know if you can see the bridge. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go down the interstate to the first exit here. So now I'm going to try it at speed. Everything looks normal. Half a tank of gas. make music with all the little uh, percussion patterns and things like that. That's, all I, that's just one little screw. I tightened it, it went away, and then it came back again. Uh, I'm about 65 to 70. Seems to do well, but with the uh, worn kingpins, at times it feels like you're on a, uh, a unicycle or something like that. So. Anyway, the next stop is Beersford. Just, uh, I'm gonna add a, I haven't added any oil since I got this thing running in Vegas. It looks like it might need about a half a quart. So anyway, whoops, I'm going to slow down a little bit.
I hope I made it. I uh, wish I had another battery. This, ba If I turn off the car, the battery will not start again without quite a jump start. But anyway, I made it. Hey, there's the new cases. make it to the house let's see if I can get this thing even to start that's been the big issue the battery I think I really messed up that battery so let's see look at that it did crank right over and as you can see I haven't tried well 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 that's kind of cool Yeah, that belt noise. I think that's the power steering pump. Or the idler. What a mess this thing is. It's as big as a truck. All right, I'm gonna run up to the car wash. I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna do some uh, quick pre-degreasing on some stuff all around here. Just get a coating of this stuff on here and blow out a ton of junk. Uh, the radiator. Uh, I'm gonna put the car up on some blocks when I get over there. Hopefully it's not that busy. Let me fix this. So the idea is to get these key pins in here and the uh, pans, you know, the transmission stuff, transmission pans and all that soaked up because I'm going to change those pan gaskets. Power steering area is a huge mess. So we want to run that stuff all down, everything in there. Keep it out of the spark plug. Wire area. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on to pre-soak and uh, clean it up. So let's go over there to the car wash.
back in business now. I gotta hook up this PCB breather line. All right, we're good to go there. Well, that's good. Shut the door. All the and look at this. I haven't done a picture of this yet. This is a real station wagon. All right. Look at that. I mean, that's like 12 feet from the edge of the tailgate all the way up to the seats. We got one, two, three, four, five, six panels. Chrysler has been doing this a long time under the name of town and country and uh caravan so look at that isn't that something look at that isn't that something i can't see people like going to see a grand canyon when you can go look at a car like this why would you go to the movie theaters why would you go to the amusement park when you can come see a car like this for free That sucker's a monster. So anyway, I should have called my car a monster, huh? Yeah, the brakes work. They're just, they're, they're tight. <laughs> And if you enjoyed these types of videos, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to us. At least hit the like button, and that will get us up higher in the algorithm. Of course, uh, we've got a lot of plans here, so I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks, and take care.